The origin of the critical speed test dates back to 1925, when he'll use the hyperbolic correlation between the velocity of athletes and the duration, over which they were able to sustain it, to estimate record times for runners and swimmers. The critical speed test for runners was first performed in 1984 and was based on the critical power test, which has already been used in cycling. Critical speed is defined as the velocity one can run without fatiguing. It is portrait by the orange line and marks a fixed velocity. Furthermore, the test gives an indication of the anaerobic capacity which is described as D' prime, and is defined as the maximal distance that can be run above critical speed. D' prime can be compared to a battery that represents the anaerobic capacity. You can either use a lot of it over a short period of time or less over a longer time span. The test does not follow a fixed protocol. However, experts recommend at least three trials that should last between 2 and 12 minutes in duration. Furthermore, constant distance trials have proven to be more reliable than time to exhaustion trials. In general, the critical speed test is considered a valid method to predict running performances. Before the trials are carried out a familiarization with the test is required. This contains a detailed explanation of the test and a series of preparation trials to optimize pacing. Before the trials a short warm-up should be performed with elements of stretching, mobilization and activation. ABC running drills are available. Then the test can start. Either the coach measures the time, or the test person stops himself with his own watch. After every trial, a period of 30 minutes of rest is required. Sources of error Although the task of running fixed distances might sound easy, it should be stated that not every terrain is suited for the trials. Sharp turns are not suited for a critical speed test. Choose an even surface to prevent injuries. Avoid elevation and in particular stairs, as they will slow you down and misrepresent your running speed. When performing the trials, pacing is key. Do not start too fast because you need to hold an even pace throughout the trials. If you cannot sustain the velocity and slow down or make a rest, the trial is invalid and needs to be performed again. As an alternative, the critical speed test can also be carried out in laboratory. The trials can also be completed on a treadmill. This allows you to set a fixed speed. However, as stated before, time to exhaustion trials are less reliable. You should also keep in mind that indoor running speeds might differ from those outdoors. After the trials, the received data points can be visualized in a graph. The points are placed by velocity described by the y-axis and duration described by the x-axis.
Later regression is used to obtain the hyperbolic function, known as the time to exhaustion curve. To determine critical speed, several different models can be used. It is important to state that none of the formulas is seen as the gold standard. One of the simpler models is the linear speed inverse time model, which converts the curve into a straight line by expressing the running speed against the inverse of the duration. This is portrait by the equation in the top right corner. In this model, critical speed is identified as the y-intercept, whilst d' prime is portrait as the gradient. Next to the linear speed inverse time model, the linear distance versus time model and the hyperbolic speed distance model are used to calculate critical speed. A study by Nemerichter et al. used these three models to determine 5,000 meter times and found in prediction error across the models of around 65 seconds, which can be considered as moderate. In conclusion, the critical speed test serves as a valid and simple alternative to spiroergometric and blood lactate tests and can be used as a useful orientation for expected finishing times in running competitions. Critical speed tests represent the pace for endurance to determine running performance. The test can be used in a variable way, also in team sports. There will be not much equipment needed. In field it just needs a marked route, for example a running track and a stopwatch. In the laboratory, a treadmill is needed. Finally, the process of the test in laboratory conditions will be summarized in a table.